Are you refusing to leave? Sorry? Are you refusing to leave? Are you asking us to leave? Are you refusing to leave? If you're going to arrest me under threat of arrest, I will leave. So, are you threatening to arrest me if I do not leave? Then you have a right to be here. Why are you arresting me? Here I'm in Discovery Green and being arrested. My name is Darius Dubosh and I volunteer with uh, Allied Scholars for Animal Protection along with Faraz. My name is Dr. Faraz Harsini. Uh, I'm a biomedical and food system scientist and I'm also the CEO and founder of Allied Scholars for Animal Protection, which is a US-based nonprofit that protects animals. And I'm also the co-organizer for Anonymous for the Voiceless for Austin and Houston chapters. The form of animal advocacy that I find the most effective is called the Cube of Truth. And it's pioneered by a group called Anonymous for the Voiceless. They've got chapters in over a thousand cities worldwide. What I found is the most important way, the most impactful way to get people's attention is to show them the real horror of what we do to animals. Yeah, I became a co-organizer along with Faraz to do a Cube of Truth in Houston because there was no one doing it in Houston and Houston's the fourth largest city in the United States. All we ask people is, how does that footage make you feel? That's all we ask. And they tell us that they don't like what they see. So Darius and Faraz, uh, in addition to being very successful in their professional lives, are very passionate about advocating for what they see as the welfare of animals. In 2015 or 2016, I went for a 10-day silent meditation retreat. You meditate from five in the morning through nine in the evening. At that meditation retreat, since it's run by Buddhists, they don't serve any animal products. So no meat, no fish, no eggs. I've always wanted to become vegetarian and not eat animals because I used to work for an animal welfare group in India. So I went through 10 days without meat. I said, well, I want to continue doing this. And uh, that's how I became vegetarian. I just wanted to do something better for, for the world. Then I looked around to see what other skills do I have. And one of them was music. So what I did was I took my accordion with me. Uh, we went to hospitals, we played music for children who were suffering from cancer. Something that really shocked me was that 40% of cancers are preventable uh, through lifestyle choices, especially with a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, I reached a point based on what I saw on documentaries like Dominion and also based on my studies that there is nothing logically, rationally, statistically, uh, ethically better to do with my life than dedicating my life to uh, spreading veganism. They often go out into public spaces and hold these things called cubes of truth. They hold a moderately sized monitor that displays a documentary about the treatment of animals in industrial farming. Uh, and they wear the guy fox masks that are usually associated with the anonymous group and often associated with just the right to protest while they do it. They don't approach people in these public spaces unless somebody comes to them to talk about what they see on the film. So we did it at least four or five times at Discovery Green. The first time we went there, we had an officer dangle handcuffs at me saying, hey, this is a private park, you gotta leave. And he said that at the behest of the park manager. And I'm telling okay. you, turn these TVs off and leave. Okay. All right. We just wanted to know. See, we don't want to get arrested, but we're just You're curious. About to get arrested. You're about to get arrested. But is this public or private? It's private park. So I'm just curious, why does that sign say owner city of Houston? The next few times when we went back to Discovery Green, they would keep hassling us, even though we were right at the edge of the park on what I thought was public sidewalk. They would say, well, you know, these styles are nicer and they belong to Discovery Green and you have to go on the city line. Discovery Green is a public park in downtown Houston. Now, even though Discovery Green is run through a partnership between the city and a nonprofit organization called Discovery Green Conservancy, it's still a public park. The website says it's a public park. The park rules say it's a public park and all the legal documents establishing Discovery Green say it's a public park. But office isn't this public property? So we've got... So here is their website. So first we have City of Houston, and I got copies for each of you. This is Harris County property records. It says Discovery Green, State Passcode, Exempt Government, Houston Downtown Park Corporation. Police started uh basically harassing us um, and also the management and 
you know, at some point it just wasn't tolerable again. Finally, one day, uh, we decided to go back and videotape everything so that we had evidence because my research showed me that Discovery Green was public property. They're claiming that it's public on their website. What ended up happening was I asked the officers, if you ask me to leave uh, on the threat of arrest, I will leave. And they kept saying, well, the manager asked you to leave. And then eventually he said, give me your ID. And I said, am I under arrest? And he said, yes, you are. If you're going to arrest me, can I leave? Am I free to go? Are you arresting me, officer? Are you arresting me? Yes. Okay. And why are you arresting me? Why are you arresting me, officer? Why are you arresting me? Public spaces like parks and sidewalks have been used by citizens since time immemorial for expressing themselves, for debating ideas, and for sharing ideas with the public. That holds true today. I grew up in uh, India and then I came to the U.S. to study in 2001. India tends to be a lot more authoritarian than the United States. If you look at press freedom, it's pretty much at the bottom of the list. There's not a culture of speaking out. When I was back in Iran, I was actually a part of a lot of uh, protests for human rights against the Iran's regime. That was 2008, 2009, uh, etc. And I almost literally got killed in one of these protests. I, I got tear gassed. Uh, my dad uh, jumped from a building. He broke his arm uh, trying to run away from the anti-riot police. Uh, so really just coming from a, from an environment where freedom of speech was so lacking. When I came to the US, you know, everyone talks about freedom of speech and, you know, of course, I think I really enjoyed it for a long time. So having that experience and then suddenly being in Discovery Green and facing this uh, oppression um, and discrimination against our content and, uh, you know, our freedom of speech was very disheartening. There's something that I know to be right and I know to be true, I should be talking about it even if it's not popular to do so. I'm a scientist and educator and all I want is for myself and other people to be able to peacefully show up in a public place and be able to uh, protest or educate others about whatever they want to talk about. So FIRE is partnering with the Law and Religion Clinic at the University of Texas Law School to defend the rights of Faraz and Darius to hold peaceful advocacy events in Discovery Green. It's a public park. They have a right to express themselves there like every other American does. There are times when I have to do what I have to do. And if I don't do it, these rights will just get lost. <laughs>